profiting of the saints. Now, let me give you the keys. There are a few keys that help men to transport spiritual realities of any kind and any sort according to the will of God and to give it material expression. And I please want you to believe the things you are about to hear because they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is how great businesses in the kingdom have been built. This is how great visions in the kingdom have been built. This is how great enviable destinies. If you have ever looked at a destiny and wondered how did they do this? I want to show you how it happened right now. And I assure you by God, it doesn't matter where you are in life and destiny. If you pay attention, the things I'm sharing with you have a grace following them. It is not only the information you are going to receive. Some of you, whilst you are hearing, like I taught you, there is the Spirit of God will be quickening you. Something, there is an enlargement that will be happening to your spirit, like a rubber ring. Something will be, there will be a stretching in the spirit until greater glory, glory in a, a greater measure is revealed through your life. In the name of Jesus. Key number one. <laughs> manifesting spiritual realities what is the first key that controls birthing transporting and bringing spiritual resources from the realm of the spirit where they are domiciled to the physical realm where they are needed for the profiting of the saints number one the first key contend all Kingdom resources, I must say this as a preamble. All kingdom resources are first spiritual. That's not the first key. Just a preamble to the first key. All kingdom resources, write this down please. They are first spiritual. That means they are realities that reside first in the realm of the spirit. Your prosperity, your influence, the anointing of the spirit upon your life, everything that God has said, is a reality in the spirit all kingdom resources are first spiritual they are realities that reside in the spirit realm now let me give you the keys number one what is the first key when you want to transport realities to be made manifest contend for light contend for light this is the first key light here means knowledge knowledge of the resources that are available for you in Christ. You cannot open up your heart to receive resources whose availability and presence you are not even aware of. Hallelujah. If I do a transfer to your account and you do not get an alert, an email, or any other way of knowing, did you know, say perhaps it were your house rent that I sent to you, one million naira or two million naira, or three million naira and you can be seated and praying saying God can you help me I'm in trouble my rent is expired the landlord is coming for me maybe they are serving me a court summon because I'm unable to pay my rent whereas two days ago three days ago a real transfer was made to your bank are we together and literally in a, in, in, in a matter of seconds less than a minute you can make that transfer from your phone and find peace. Yet, because you do not know, you can be lamenting, whereas your banker knows that you have, an, uh, you have some money there. This is how it is with many believers. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Imagine the many things that God has kept for you that you do not know. Strategic relationships, but first in the spirit. Strategic help, but first in the spirit. Men and women raised by God to help you while you serve him, but that reality is still in the spirit. Advancement, restoration, these are all possibilities and realities, but that they are locked up. They reside in the spirit. Everything needed for your excelling as a believer is already provided for this is a fact you have to train your spirit man and your mind to believe all things all things the bible says all things are yours 
contend for light contend for knowledge this is why you came to church now you are hearing apostle are you saying that the cure for my rent issue is already in the spirit yes sir are you saying that i can walk free of this sickness that the provision the spiritual resources that can translate to a new body part the spiritual resources that can translate to health they are not coming they are already a reality there every one naira one dollar you will ever have and make in this life the reality of those resources are already in the realm of the spirit believe me <laughs> do you believe this contend for light light beyond the realm of ignorance convince yourself by the spirit of god the entrance of his word brings light what you are hearing now is giving you confidence is killing away carnality so satan will tell you if it is true where is the anointing man of god prove that you are anointed by laying hands on someone nothing happens don't worry the problem is not the presence of that reality or, or, or the, the falsehood of what you believe. No. What you believe is the truth. It's just that you have not mastered how to convert it. How to make it a reality. Hallelujah. Contend for light. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second key? I want to dwell a bit on this second key. Because it is a miracle that changed my life. My God. It's easy for the average believer who has been in church to understand point one. Light. Every gathering in God's presence with God's people with a good teaching priest is a feast of light. But the reason why light does not profit many believers is because of the second point. Write this down. The second key to manifesting spiritual realities I wrote here. Press into the realm of consciousness and conviction you just write it and i'll explain to you press into the realm of consciousness and conviction press into the realm of consciousness and conviction psalm 36 verse 9 for with thee is the fountain of life read the remaining line please in thy light one more time there are two things the Bible is saying here number one is you need his light but when his light arrives that is not all you need there is a kind of light you must see through his light in your light I have seen your light but there is a light I need to see in the midst of your light he says in your light shall we see light press into the realm of consciousness and conviction now watch this the word conscious means to be aware of and to have the ability to respond to when they say you are conscious towards something it means that number one you are aware of that thing or that environment and that you have the ability to respond to be conscious means to be awake onto or to be awake towards so when you are sleeping they call you unconscious with respect to that realm do you know why because even though you are alive your consciousness is not there you are sleeping so two people can be discussing within the room and although you are there you may not hear what they are saying because you are asleep when they wake you and give you a few minutes to get yourself together now you are conscious of the environment and what is the proof that you are conscious you can respond intelligently if i ask you how are you or where did you keep the key you can answer me you may not be able to give me that answer while you are asleep and yet you are not dead are we together now so when we talk about being conscious it means being alive unto a reality and let me tell you the truth until you rise to a realm beyond just light the realm of consciousness and conviction you will never never have those realities manifest 
This is the assignment of a mystery in the spirit called meditation. Write it down, please. The assignment of meditation is to transport spiritual realities beyond the book, beyond the message, into your spirit, into your consciousness. The mystery that controls that transportation is called meditation. The second key, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. To be conscious means to be aware of. Now watch this. I wrote something down here. You are conscious of a thing when it dominates your thoughts. Did you hear that? You are only conscious of a thing when it has gained dominance over your thoughts. That means your thinking has been influenced by that reality. Now it has come to a realm of consciousness. Look up please. How many of you have gone to any embassy whatsoever? Don't lift your hands. Maybe to go and apply for a visa. American embassy, UK embassy. You know how you think about it all through the night? You've thought about it. If for any reason you wake up, what is on your mind? You are imagining, I'm standing before the consular now. This dress I'm wearing, no, I'll change it. I don't want trouble. I need to get this visa. You see how your whole day, some of you, it affects your mood. You are not able to eat till you return. And it's not like it's a doctor that said you should not eat. You are just thinking. That thing has happened as a result of meditation. You literally see yourself you've never been to the embassy say you don't even know how it looks like yet your mind is so powerful your mind will simulate a consular officer standing there and yourself answering all kinds of questions that is how you are into that project let me tell you the truth those who build anything great are not just those who have wishful thinking they have become immersed into the thing that drives them the Bible calls it the zeal of the Lord. That the zeal of the Lord can consume a man. Are we together? To a point where what dominates your thoughts is the reality of that truth according to scripture. All through while Jesus walked upon the earth, he kept talking about the purpose for which he came. He kept talking about the fact that he was going to die. He will be buried. What kind of a man keeps talking about his death? You will call it negative confession. It was not negative confession. Jesus kept repeating, I'm going to die, oh, and I will come back to life again. To the point that Peter rebuked him and said, stop saying all these things. The reason why many people cannot become and they cannot manifest realities is that they have not taken the truths of scripture and meditated upon it until it moved past the realm of just information and sunk into your spirit something happens to a man when the word of god becomes spirit and life it occupies your consciousness you cannot be separated from that truth again you have so believed it, you have become one with it. Are we together now? Yes. This is very powerful. You have become one with that belief. You can't deny it again. You can't betray it again. The way you know that light has not entered your consciousness is that the moment it does not work, you are in a, you are in a hurry to divorce it because you never truly believed it. Hallelujah. So if, for instance, someone is a giver and you just hear one message against giving, you say, thank God, I've been looking. You will never believed in giving. Never. 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 Consciousness. When you get to that point, the day you meditate on your being anointed, one day, as you are opening the scripture, light, it will no longer be Thou anointest my head with oil. That is stories. A day will come, something will leap upon you. And whether you are sleeping, whether you are wearing a pajamas or on jean or on suit, the consciousness, not just by shouting and saying, I'm anointed, it's a settled reality. Let me tell you with all humility, I sat down with this book 
and as I meditated upon it it didn't happen every day but one day certain things just entered my spirit so this is how much power the believer can carry it says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth when I saw it I don't know if I believed it the first time I was just sincerely reading the Bible but one day light entered me the true spirit of dominion that there is no territory that sustains the power to fight your influence if you have not carried the consciousness of certain things you will only be a victim your mind will be swinging from left to right one day I meditated on the scripture that says whatsoever he doeth prospers now let me tell you that looks like a simple story oh yes whatsoever I do it prosper amen that, no you have not gotten it you act on that thing it will never work for you he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters one day is by 2 a.m. in the morning this is you you are meditating on that thing whatsoever he doeth prospers you look at your hands. Whatsoever he doeth, prospers. Whatsoever he doeth, prospers. It will make sense to you in a way that will annoy somebody close to you because they don't know what has entered you. Whatsoever he doeth, prospers. From that day, you will never fail in anything again because it has entered your consciousness. This is what it means in Ezekiel 2 and verse 2. And the spirit entered into me the spirit of any revelation if it has not entered you you will keep gyrating this is the problem with the body of christ we shout over revelations that have not moved past the realm of knowledge into your consciousness in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed i meditated on that scripture and I came to a conclusion that I cannot be a cause to my world. In thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Where I come from notwithstanding is, is a blessing that God gave to Abraham and his seed. And Galatians 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he's talking about me. I am a blessing. If I come to your house, I am a blessing. Some things must leave and some things must come. If I shake hands with you, it's not pride. Some things must leave and some things must come. If you listen to me, some things must leave and some things must come. It's a consciousness. It's not about empty boasting. You can be shouting and the realm of the spirit will say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? This is what great men like Bishop Oyedeko meditated upon. And he said, God told him he canceled his ministrations. And he said, get down and make my people rich. Now, that may, a lot of people find it offensive. That's why he didn't say it to everybody. He said it to the one who can believe him. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is what I believe. Oh. This reading things randomly. When the spirit of revelation comes to you, eh, you can stay on one scripture for one week. It's not a competition to finish the Bible. It's that one scripture that has a treasure that defines the next 10 years of your life. You stay there till the spirit of that word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall. He never said I shall not want money. If all you are thinking about is money, it's a sign that you are thinking carnally. I shall not want. This is the realm of sufficiency. I shall not want men. I shall not want things. I shall not want influence. No. This revelation damages insufficiency forever. Never will you be without help. If God sends you to America, you shall not want. If he sends you to Europe, you shall not want. If he brings you to Abuja, you shall not want. You are crying simply because you do not know. You are wanting. Even though you are reading the scripture, it is not yet in your consciousness. Take it higher for me.
We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We are changed. We are changed. We will stay until we are changed. Can I tell you the truth? There is nothing you can do with a man that has caught light beyond the book. If it has entered that realm of consciousness, only death can stop it from happening. It's a, it's a realm where it is settled. No matter what you say or do not say, as far as that result happening, it's a realm. Listen, this is a reality that both science and religion tell you that controls manifestation. The realm of consciousness. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Still take it high for me. There are things I believe I can never be a victim of till Jesus comes. And this is not empty talk. I have stayed with scripture until that thing one of it is that I can never lack the help of men. No. No. It's not because I'm anointed. It's the revelation that brought that anointing. This thing you see, this grace called favor that you are shouting. You read it, you will never get it. it that's not how it works. We will stay until we are found. 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 We will stay. When God called me into ministry, I took time to pray. One of the things I covenanted with God with was that I did not want to manipulate God's people because of this money thing. I saw sincere, well-meaning people who love the Lord. But once you are pushed by the pressure of ministry, you would do things you never planned doing. But I know that I have to eat. And the implication of ministry is that you will feed many people. You will be like Father Abraham, having many children, your own and the ones that have forced themselves to be your own. And I said, God, I don't want to tell people lies. I had great men like Bishop Oyedeko, great men like my dear revered mentor, Dr. Miles Munro. They talked about the potency of walking in the blessings of God. While others were there arguing in pride with no result, I said, God, you can't be lying. Please show me. I confess my ignorance. I have read this thing, but it's not working. There are human beings in the world, but nobody's looking my direction. I don't need to go to a herbalist. There is a way. Hi. Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen, that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. When I caught that revelation of I shall not want, I said, this is it. And God is able to make all grace. If you think what prospers men is business, get ready to suffer till Jesus comes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against those things. Don't get me wrong. But first things first. The realm of the spirit is what controls the physical realm. But when you hold it there, bah, that's it. You've held it. You've held it. It's true. The same thing with the ministry of the spirit, the anointing. I saw great people that I admired walking in dimensions of the anointing. And I said, there has to be a way. I got all the teachings and the materials. I don't want to do a ministry speaking to people and they're shouting amen. Coming week after week, making sacrifices and then they don't testify. That is evil and is wicked. In fact, it's fraud. I said, I don't want that kind of thing. Father, show me the secret to real power. Real, genuine power. 
I have found David, my servant. Ah, so God can find men, but until he finds his servant, he will not anoint you. God can find Joshua Selman, but he's looking for his servant. For as long as you are still Joshua Selman, that oil will not come to your head until you become his servant. The anointing is not for men of God. The anointing is for servants. Genuine people who love Jesus beyond their reputation, who want to see him glorified. You see, you know why sometimes you hear me tell these guys to play these things? This is not, it's not a movie. One day, I was meditating on scripture and the Lord took me to the story of Elisha. He said, bring me a mistral. And while the mistral played, he said, the hand of the Lord came upon him and he began to prophesy. Then he says, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart. It may not work for everyone, but that is how light came to me. I valued divine presence when I meditated on the scripture Moses said do not send us from here if your presence I'm showing you how to manifest realities what provided what you are doing is just reading the Bible to ease the guilt of feeling less spiritual you will never never produce anything potent he said if your presence will not go with us and then here's what he said. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I said, that's the key to rest. The presence of God. I remember in 2005, I spent a major part of that year doing a research on Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. I wanted to know what was it about Jewish worship and God's presence. That's when you saw that I started falling in love with all these kind of Paul Wilbur songs, King of Kings, we hail you most high. All these songs that came laid down by the Spirit because I found out that there was a connection to these kinds of songs and the Spirit of God and the Shekinah of God. Listen, you must move past the realm of just reading scripture and get it to your consciousness. It will take time but allow the Spirit of God move it. Stay in your one room and read the scripture on how God brings men out. The day it enters your spirit, you will know. The devil will know. Everything around you will know. And like a magnet, it will start drawing from anywhere on earth. The men and the circumstances that must make that word become reality in your life. I assure you on this. Listen, hear me. The day the power to prosper through meditation comes on you, right where you are, you know how and you know how explosions happen. A nuclear bomb, huh? That's how it would from your place. It's like an explosion in your spirit. It will gravitate everything that must make that revelation true in your life, and it will bring it to your life. It is true. Sometimes it's difficult to teach these things because people mistaking it for pride. But by the privilege of God's grace, you see, we have proven these things and we'll prove it again and again and again. Your consciousness. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It doesn't stop there, but that is the springboard. The Lord, not my ability, the Lord. Here's how many of us interpret it. My brain is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> now, the Lord, the journey to lasting wealth starts with the Lord. It does not ignore your mind. It does not ignore your value, but it is the Lord. Because he must be Alpha and Omega. Are we together? Sit down, let me give you the third. 
for someone let me give you a little assignment just lay your hand gently on your head I want you to think of one scripture by the Spirit that you know there are many scattered in the Bible but one bailout scripture that you need to meditate upon until light enters your spirit for some of you is thou anointest my head thou anointest my ministry are you seeing that ministry anointed rising from where it is are you seeing yourself rising as a father of nations you may not be physically called Abraham but ladies and gentlemen when what God told Abraham enters you nothing will keep you down you just do what I'm asking you to do and you see a miracle that is happening to your spirit man you're a businessman take away your mind from your brain and look on to Jesus some of you are in ministry you have struggled and struggled it's not an issue of struggling there is a consciousness for as long as there are eight billion people on earth everybody will not tell God no he can fish help for you from everywhere there are some of you the revelation for you should be that God is the one who gives you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places mm. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper you have to be taught no it's not your ability you are taught you just take a minute to meditate on this some of you is that meditation that will cure you from causes forever raised up with him out of every tribe out of every tongue even the worship of the dead yes people were buried in my village but have been exalted exalted beyond every curse exalted beyond every charm any enchantment for someone the revelation for you is no weapon formed against you formed in the secret formed by the conspiracy of men no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper for another surely they shall gather but because they are gathering of not of the Lord they will scatter as much as they have gathered they will come in one way and be dispersed in seven ways hallelujah in Jesus name hear me Psalm 119 from verse 97 to 99 let's hurry up Psalm 119 97 to 99 meditation involves hearing meditation involves speaking meditation involves the power of your imagination all of them have to come into play as you meditate oh how I love thy law he says they or it is my meditation how long the psalmist all the day my meditation verse 98 thou through your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me last verse I have more understanding than my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation the secret to my conviction my meditation he's saying or my persuasion is that I have meditated on that reality you see one of the ways you meditate is to repeat thoughts again and again and again it's a practice till today till today I can play a teaching play a message play scriptures play verses again and again sometimes I make declarations myself and record it prophetic declarations myself and I put it on repeat while I sleep there are times I want to focus on just two verses 
I meditate on those two verses. I first quote them and then make prophetic declarations by myself. They are in my phone. And I play it on repeat. Whether I'm awake or sleeping. Sometimes I'm doing my study and they are playing. The goal is not awareness. I'm transporting it to a realm. When it lands that realm, I know that I'm ready for the next step. I've shared with you my story. When God moved us to Abuja, I was praying and trusting God for direction. And God told me, like he did Abraham, get the map of Abuja. Get the map of Nigeria. Get the map of Africa. Get the map of the world. And he says, start praying with those maps. So every time I'm praying, I will place those maps, four of them. I still have them till today. And lay my hands. One day, something happened to me. I looked at the map of Abuja and it became small. Very small. The city just became, it's like it just shrunk and it became small. I knew a miracle had happened. I knew Koinonia was ready to start. Because that reality of territorial dominion for the sake of his majesty, that's what happened. Hallelujah. But every once in a while, not every time, I revisit those maps again. And now that God is sending us to the nations, I carry that map of the world sometimes and I look at it. And I look at the continents from the eyes of the creator. Not from the eyes of an inhabitant. You can't see that far. But when you stand with the creator's lens, you will see that there is no nation you cannot conquer. Men like John Knox saw this and they said, God, give me Scotland, not a community. Give me that territory. Listen. When you do this, you can see great things. You can put your businesses and say, by God's grace, I will have a global business for the kingdom. People will laugh at you. It's, it's not an attack. It's a usual thing with men. Men are permitted to laugh until your result bail you out. Provided you have not produced results, don't be angry that men laugh and mock. Mockers are a natural pathway to greatness. If you don't find them, you're on the wrong path. Their presence validates that you might be doing something right. So you continue. But when you emerge, you get that thing to your consciousness. You will marvel and wonder at what happens to you. Hallelujah. My dear friend, Pastor Shola, when his church got born, we went for a conference in his church. And Pastor Poju said something, just a, a brief session before I came up to preach. And he said something within a few minutes, but it was such a profound blessing. He told the church then, he said, take away the memory from your mind of a bond church and see a great church that God is building. As simple as that statement was, I said, this is it. The Spirit of God quickened that statement. While we look not at the things that are seen, you have been seeing your disappointment. Every time you look at your passport, you remember the visa you didn't get. You look at the situation and you see yourself as a beggar forever. You see yourself as a weak man of God in competition with other men of God or getting angry. That is the reason why it keeps you like that. You need to wipe that vision out of your mind. You must have control over your meditation. Finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4, I believe in verse 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise koinonia help me think on these things anything that is outside this list the bible is giving you an advice that meditating on them is a risk to your destiny Number three, manifesting spiritual realities. Can we continue? I want you to listen to point number three very carefully. Mix the truth you know with faith. Mix the truth you know with faith. Hebrews 4 and verse 2. 
mix the truth you have found that has entered into your consciousness mix it with faith for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith what does it mean to mix combine combine your meditation with faith what is faith your obedience your actions of obedience obedience to the conditions that connect to the promise every speaking of God I have taught you here has conditions connected to it listen carefully the profit point of your Christian adventure is when you find the truth meditate to create conviction and then you engage you mix with obedience faith most people do not obey scripture they want the results but they are not willing to obey to obey means you have to embrace the spirit of wisdom what does the bible say you should do that connects to the promise you are looking for for instance the bible talks about laziness and begging how that both of them are related so when you meditate on the fact that the bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat is that true what is your point of obedience now whatsoever your hand findeth to do huh? that is in righteousness you do as unto god so you can go and get the job even though it's just 40,000 or 50,000 you are obeying you are working in keeping with the law of diligence that there is a relationship between increase and diligence there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty okay what then is the action point there that means I will give not out of compulsion or manipulation but with the revelation that number one I love Jesus but that the law of increase is connected to giving and then you do so and it works for you that's why I said obedience requires not just zeal but the spirit of wisdom you need to know what to do master we have told all night there are many many people who are found wanting in the place of obedience is why they do not see promises manifest let me tell you the truth as much as I sympathize with the many things happening around our nation there are people even if dollar were one naira to one dollar they will still be poor because their problem is not Nigeria nor whatever government is in power I'm not a politician there is an intrinsic determination to remain lazy Huh? Jesus said the poor you always have with you is your own is your own responsibility to exempt yourself there are people who are very lazy there are others whose energy is not coordinated with wisdom so there is blind dissipation of energy that is not constructive this is what we call productivity channeling your energy with intelligence so that you produce specific outcomes you don't waste energy and resources are we together yes this can be true for ministry as a man of God you cannot sit down lazing around being everywhere talking gossiping jumping from pillar to post and you want God to trust you with the destinies of many you don't sit down to pray you don't sit down to learn you don't open up your heart to grow God is not a scammer he's not a fraud star he's in a business of using serious people not just available people it's wonderful to be available but you must also be usable are we learning now so most of us have found one thing someone after this meeting you need to get angry and tell yourself this week I must start something if a job does not come by the spirit of grace I will read a book I will watch something profitable online I will get up and go and look for there's a land that my brother has I will start farming this week let me farm and fail no problem at the point of obedience that's when the miracle comes he told the ten lepers go and show yourself to the priest the Bible says as they went say as they went 
One more time, say as they went. The miracle happens at the point of obedience, not before obedience. Maybe there are people here God has spoken to to sow certain seeds according to the revelation and Isaac sowed in that land in the time of famine. And you are there giving flimsy excuses. Time will pass, the famine will finish and you will remain broke. When God put it in my heart to do some of the things we are doing now, I became excited because one, I love Jesus sincerely. Two, I love you with all my heart. Three, I love myself with all my heart. You see that? That in my obedience is my rising. I don't rise because I'm a man of God. I rise because I'm a practitioner of the truth of God's word. 